Hey, it's Matt. In this video, I want to address a common question about flexibility, which is why do exercises that are designed to make a particular muscle or muscle group or kind of like, you know, area of the body more flexible, why do they sometimes just not work? Like you might see the person uh, instructing do the exercise and it you know, clearly is making the, the muscle lengthen. And you've also heard that this exercise works for many other people. And yet when you do it, it might not necessarily give you results. You might do it every single day. Go, 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 go. And then like people say, oh yeah, I just did this for 30 days and so much flexibility, but you do it and it's just like, you might get nothing or you might get some temporary flexibility, but it just kind of like goes back and then it's as if you never did anything. So I recently put up a, a video and it was a uh, flexibility routine for the, the kind of back chain, all down the hamstrings and calves in the back to make that area uh, more flexible. And it's a routine from the, the Russian ballet. So it's a completely legitimate, very excellent, um, flexibility routine that has done wonders for many people. And yet I know for a fact that some people, if they tried it, it wouldn't work for them. Just, just wouldn't work for them. They would, they would run into some problem and it would just be like, well, I'm not going to do this because it doesn't work. And I know that's true because it was completely true for me. Uh, although I've been getting great results from that routine, I couldn't have even contemplated trying that routine until recently. Uh, I, I had started getting terrible flexibility when I was 18 or something, and I'm 33 now. And I could not improve my flexibility for like 12 or something years, like, like at all, like couldn't make any progress. It's just like, I went to yoga, I did I looked up every stretch on the internet, read all these articles, and I tried all these stretches. I would do stretches and stretches and stretches for two hours a day. And, you know, if I looked at myself in the mirror and I looked at a picture or a video, I'd be like, I am doing this thing completely right. Or even if I was with a yoga teacher, they'd be like, yeah, you're doing it right. But then they'd be like, this idiot can't do it, <laughs> right? Can't, can't do the flexibility. But the thing is like, flexibility exercises are extremely easy. They're not complicated in any way. Like however you think you're meant to do them, that's probably how you're meant to do them in terms of kind of like the intention and the, the physical actual form that you're meant to take. However, sometimes they don't work. Now I'm going to explain why in, in a couple of layers. Okay. Now the first, as I mentioned before, and I, kind of say it a lot, but it's so relevant to say because it's so against the idea that is deeply, deeply entrenched in the mainstream thought that really needs to be like karate chopped, I suppose, it's just busted out of mainstream think, is that the way flexibility is gained is simply by pulling on a muscle and then like a rubber band, it gets longer due to the elastic properties of the muscle. Like as if tight muscles, there's like some physical wrong thing with the tissue. Like I used to envisage based on what I was told that, you know, the muscles are all knotted up or the, the fibers are kind of like tangled or they're like stuck together. And that's why when I pull on them, they, they kind of like eh, can't get them. But that's just not how it is. That's like this terrible, awful myth propagated by, I don't know who, maybe it's by the medical establishment that wants you to come and get massages or something or get like physical things done to your muscles to supposedly fix them. But muscle tightness is maintained by the nervous system. Uh, you can go and even read a book by Pavel Tsitsilin, a Belarusian guy who is very well known for flexibility and he brought all these famous techniques from Belarus to the United States and tra trains people and you know he's very, very smart and he pointed out that, you know, it comes from the, the nervous system, like your brain here, then there's motor cortex somewhere. I don't know exactly where. And then from the motor cortex come all these motor neurons, you know, down through your spinal cord, 
and then they branch off into your muscles. And when you try and do a stretch, something to make the muscles elongate, let's say, if you lack the coordination or stability or muscular control or any sort of like physical skill that would be required uh, to allow your muscles to go to, you know, be, let's say, safe or like operate correctly in an elongated range, like if you lack any of that, then the nervous system is like, oh, no, no, this, it's not trained, right? And it just contracts, okay? Now, as I said, I was going to explain the layers. So that's the first layer. Now, that's just a physical layer. That is one reason why muscles can stay tight. But even, even still, you would think it's quite simple. You would still think you could get results. Like, oh, okay, well, like in, in Sutzelin's book, he says, okay, well, all you have to do is you have to wait out this, this process that the nervous system goes through in which... You know, you, you start to take your muscle into an elongated position and then the nervous system kind of freaks out and then it kind of just clamps for a while, but then it eventually goes, oh no, everything's okay, everything's okay, release. And it releases a bit and, you know, it might just release like one millimeter or something like that. And then you have to go through like the whole process again. Now, the, what he's just referring to is reality. Like it does work like that. Like that is how flexibility works for me these days, right? Like now, now that I'm doing real pretty hardcore flexibility training, I can say that's exactly how it works. However, it wasn't always like that for me. Like years ago when I would try to do flexibility, if I tried to do something, I didn't really have the same experience that I tried to do now, that, that I get now. I, I would just do it and I'd be like, I don't know. I feel nothing, I just feel tightness, I just feel pain, it's horrible, and nothing's happening, like I could stay here for as long as I want, and if I even just stay here, my arm or leg just goes numb, and hurts, like, and it becomes excruciatingly painful, and I don't get this release at all, like nothing, nothing happens, and I could not improve my flexibility at all. So, what I eventually discovered is that there is an, there's other reasons why your brain slash nervous system can keep your muscles tight, apart from just this physical reason of not having enough stability, coordination, or strength in the muscle or something like that. And I discovered this, I actually explained this uh, in great detail in the video that I created called my one hour muscular tension manifesto, bit of a flashy name, but basically for 45 minutes or so, I explain exactly what's going on with this whole process of muscular tension. And then the, in the 15 minutes at the end, I kind of explain um, like my product called the muscular tension release system. But I go into great detail, obviously I can't go into that kind of detail right now, but I explain that I discovered the work of this uh, German psychoanalyst named Wilhelm Reich, and he was a student of uh, Freud and a contemporary of Carl Jung, disagreed with both of those guys on a number of matters, as I do as well. And he discovered that when he would have clients come into therapy, that, you know, the worse they were, the, wor the more messed up they were, let's just say, like the more issues they had, he would also notice that there was this correlation between that and like physical tightness, right? Muscular tension. And he also noticed that when he would coach people to have like uh, breakthroughs mentally, or he used the word psychically just to refer to the psyche, he would be like, oh, and there was uh, releases in muscles as well. Um, and that led him to state that uh, muscle rigidity and psychic rigidity are kind of like, you know, oh, related are two related concepts let's say the way i like to put it is that physical tightness uh like extremely tight muscles can be like a physical manifestation of you know just whatever mind stuff right like uh, i don't want to create some stigma on it that's like something that you go to psych psychoanalysis for or anything like that because what i discovered is that you can get tight muscles from just like any regular typical stuff right like Check out these examples, right? Like if you if your like shoulders are 
uptight like this, right? That can just be because you feel like there is a weight on your shoulders and the whole world is kind of like, ah, ah, right? And I've had experiences where I do particular exercises that I kind of like invented myself in a way where, you know, you can do physical exercises and then trigger a release and then you actually notice like, oh, this horrible feeling or kind of like thought that you had that was kind of an irrational thought that was related to ideas like that, like the weight of the world being on your shoulders. Another example, like, no, it's very common. People have these rounded shoulders, right? This like chest pulling forward and might sound almost too spiritual for some people to believe, but that is very much related to, you know, protecting the heart or just protecting um, just stopping yourself from like opening up and just experiencing life in a more connected way. I don't really go for all the spiritual stuff, but sometimes you just need to use those words. Or if you have like, you know, low back pain and you're, you know, rounded like this and <clears throat> right. Like even in a, in a book, there's a book by a guy called John Sano. He wrote a book about how back pain can be related to anger and he would notice patients come in and he would coach them on anger and things like that. And voila, their back pain would go away. But these are like really kind of like clear, obvious examples, but sometimes like, like these things can just happen all over your body. Just like just one little moment or something where you had some small kind of thing that happened in your life that isn't even really significant. You would never even really think it was significant, but there might've been some emotional reaction to it. And then whoop, there was like some muscular tension induced due to that experience. And it just, you don't really think of it or know about it, but it just goes whoop, and it's, and it's in there and it just kind of stays there forever <laughs> until you kind of like figure that out. Um, and you don't have to just do it mentally. You don't have to go to like therapy. You can just do like particular movements and get the body movement moving and do special things where you just become more conscious of your muscles and it kind of, um, you can kind of just trigger all that to kind of leave your body. Um, and after you kind of get rid of like a lot of that stuff, like, I don't know, 90% of it or whatever or something, then your body starts to feel really normal and, you know, just, it can move you know, really freely and all that stuff. And you even notice that you gain muscle because like muscle that was, you kind of was like dead, like completely inactive, was just like not able to function correctly. So you, you gain muscle mass as if by magic. Uh, so that's a pretty good process, right? So this is the kind of stuff that I talk about on my channel. Like most mainstream stuff is just like do physical exercise, get result. And they don't talk about how the mind is involved at all or the nervous system, there's just like nothing. It's just like, bro, do these push-ups and bench press and get a big chest. Or if you've got glutes that aren't working, do a glute bridge and your glutes will be working. And if you've got tight hamstrings, then just reach down to your toes and touch them every day and then your hamstrings will be loose. So if you like this kind of content that's maybe a little uh, out of the mainstream, maybe a little bit esoteric, but you sense that there might be something to it, like you sense that, yeah, it could be true, that there's something to do with the mind, then just subscribe to the channel or you can check out my website, which is mattcookmovement.com. And if you want to find out more about that muscular release tension system that I created, that's also on my website, but I also created a special website for it. It's called themovementvideo.com. So feel free to take any of those options. Other than that, just keep a lookout for more of my videos and I'll see you soon.